Good afternoon, and welcome to the parish of St. Margaret for the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn can be found in the Ignatius Pew hymnal number 178, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, hymn number 178. that we are always in the presence of God, we begin as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to offer to Almighty God our evening sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Father's forgiveness, for it's full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. For whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be a suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs, closed up in its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of her man, this one has been taken. That is why man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them shall become one flesh. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he, for a little while, was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, what did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned him about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that they might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you. Whoever does not accept the kingdom of God, like a child, will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and my dear sisters in Christ, the great man Solomon, there is much more to life, you know, than simply just the acquiring and amassing of material wealth. In the words of the man Solomon, he lays it down, three of the great purposes for which God ordained the gift of life. And in this prayer that he asked God for wisdom, he points out that he created us to rule over his creatures, to govern the world in holiness and justice, and to render judgment with integrity of heart. Three great purposes for which you and I have been summoned into this place and we've been consecrated and sanctified to do these three great works. The matter of rendering judgment in integrity of heart, I will take up the words of Moses which ended last week's readings. For Moses expressed this great wish if only all the people of God were prophets. In other words, if only all of them had the mind of God. And therefore, if it were the case, governing them, instructing them, teaching them would not be so burdensome. And these words find an echo in every age, and particularly in today's world where on this matter of life, there is so much acrimony, so much strife, and so much division on something so fundamental as life, without which nothing good can be enjoyed, nothing good can be possessed, if only we had the mind of God. How easy and how easy this job would be. I envy no man of his culture. I condemn no man of the culture in which he finds himself. I envy no man of the language he speaks, the gender he has. I can't, neither should I condemn. And why not? I had no choice in what nation I was born, what language I speak, what gender I had, none. It's not for me 
to condemn anyone or to envy anyone. What I give God thanks for every day is this wonderful gift of life that he gave me. I give him thanks for the mom, the breast that he entrusted me to, the nation I was born. I give him thanks and I envy no one. I condemn no one. And if we are to render judgment in integrity of heart, no man has a right to envy another or to condemn another because of his language, because of his gender, because of the nationality, his tongue. No one has it because all of us, life is given. All of life is grace, God's gift. And therefore, I am not a master of it. And I hate to break all people's hearts. Neither are you. No president, no governor, no senator, none is a master. Because none of them have a choice in what nation they were born, what language they speak. None of them. Life is all a matter of grace. On this matter, therefore, that stands before us. One of the things I often do at the end of every funeral mass, given my priesthood responsibility to comfort God's people, in the Book of Wisdom, you know, God lays out that when he made all things, all of it was wholesome. There was not one destructive drop when he made them. Everything was wholesome. And he will lay out this case before you and I as to why death entered. And death entered because there are those who envy him of his power and knowledge. And there are those who are deceitful. Through envy and deceit, death entered the world. Of all the books growing up that formed the greatest of impression on me was always the book of Genesis. It's a beautiful book. And I know we live in an age of images where television can impress people with all kinds of images. But this book, Growing up, and thanks to my mom, this book made an impression that no images that man create can decimate that great image. And may I for a moment give a wonderful distinction that is laid out in today's reading. You watch our television shows today and how man came about, and the History Channel, not that I necessarily watch the History Channel, but as a man of science, what they would normally do as man began as a savage. That's what he was. Groping, evolving in reason and language. That's their impression of the beginning of all things. But I challenge you, look at the difference that God laid before you and I. That we were not born savages. That's not what we were. When he lay them out, he had language, he had reason, named them, and everything that he named, oh my, God approved. We don't, we weren't born savages. What the sacred scripture lays out today, we become savages. God did not make any. By our deceitful words, evil deeds, what we do is we become. It's what we become. We diminish ourselves in character, in stature before God by our words and our deeds. I envy no man, as I said. You can do, and every man has his freedom. God never brought us to be slaves. It's not in God's nature. But I can say this. I cannot understand anyone 
who profess this Catholic faith hold God to be the source of all knowledge, the source of all life, and then say that he or she has the right to take it. Where is that commandment? Where can I find that counsel? In what words or an aspect of our religion can anyone find that commandment or that counsel that God had made us masters, that we at any time in such arbitrariness can determine when life enters the world, from whence comes this power and authority. Is it not stealing and taking from God what rightly belongs to him? Is that not envy, envying God of his power, God of his knowledge? Because it is. And as much as history and worlds may believe that somehow we have left behind this savagery that they place, then we haven't looked around at our human condition. We haven't reflected on it enough to realize that in our words and deeds, what savagery we impose on one another. And all for what? All for what? Because of envy. We envy another. We hate a man because of the place where he was born, the language he speaks. And we hate and we condemn. And we destroy. And we say, that we're civilized. God takes a different view. We weren't made savages. We become savages. And we're not supposed to be savages. God who gives this life preserves it. And you and I have been called into this faith. It's the reason why God has called us and summoned us into this place that through you and I he preserves defend and protect what he gives and the greatest gift of all life we bring forth to the world the great gospel of life what a great gift it is what a great gift and beautiful gift it is. Immense in value. There is nothing on the face of this earth. No amount of money, no amount of wealth, no amount of possession that equals its value. None. Because it is the foremost and greatest of all gifts. And nothing rivals it. And nothing should it. We must, as a people, be reconciled to the mind of God. I'll leave you with the same thing I left last week. And I want to leave us with that. When God constituted the people of Israel, he created two institutions of governance. There was the ecclesiastical governance with Aaron as his high priest. There was the civil governance with his various kings. But what he made sure, the people of Israel, they draw forth all their wisdom, all their strength, all their counsel from their spiritual life. It's the spiritual life of their nation that gives life and vitality to their civil lives. And what we as Catholics seem to practice today is to believe the opposite. And it is from our civil lives we draw forth our counsel and wisdom to flourish or to nourish and to inform our spiritual life. That's not the gospel. Has never been the gospel. God is our helper. 
It is our help in ages past. And therefore we draw forth, you and I as Catholics, no matter what we do, in every aspect of our civil lives, we draw forth our strength and our counsel and wisdom from our spiritual life. And in drawing forth what we do, we draw forth our life from God. It is from this that we draw forth our counsel. This new gospel of looking to the Republican Party or to the Democratic Party from which our faith is informed. Never heard of it. Never heard of that faith. Never heard of that gospel. That is something totally alien to this faith and totally alien to good wisdom and right judgment. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to the Lord, offering our needs and our lives. For those who shepherd the faithful, that they will always seek God's will, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For growing respect for the dignity of each and every human life, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For those who are burdened by physical and mental illness, that they find courage in God, through whom all things are possible, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, and let us remember in a special way at this Mass. Richard Ennis, may they receive the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Amen. And in the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. God, our creator, you have given us salvation. May our prayers and strivings be acceptable as we await your coming. And we ask this in the name of Christ, our Lord. Our offertory hymn is number 190 in the hymnal, Lord of All Hopefulness, hymn number 190. <laughs>
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord listen to sacrifice at your hands, to the praise of the Lord of his name, pardon of all his holy church. O Lord, accept, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your command, and through the sacred mystery, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living in truth, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. for you of your grace, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You have formed man in your own image, and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and time again, you offer them covenant, and through the prophets, taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, begotten, only begotten Son, to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners' freedom and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bring into perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify them to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these orphans, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which himself left us as an eternal covenant. But when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, 
taking the cup filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and granting your love and kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one cup, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, the, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant our merciful Father that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, and there, with the whole of creation, Free from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory of the world. O Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
brothers and sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall go with you. Our communion hymn is number 228, Panis Angelicus, hymn number 228.
Let us pray. Almighty God, grant us that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, thus to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Three announcements. <clears throat> the Rock and Calendar Life Chain will take place on Sunday from 2 until 3.30 on the corner of Route 59 and Milltown Road. Please stop by for a part of the time and pray and give witness to the sanctity of human life. Next Friday, October 8th, the nocturnal adoration will take place from 8 p.m. until 11 p.m. On Monday, October 4th, is the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. We'll bless the animals at 6 p.m. in front of the church. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wicked and the sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seek the ruin of souls. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and one another. Thanks be to God. Thank you.